had a good day. Uh, today we are giving uh, first class on the compiler construction, especially CHC 2021 batches. Uh, so, uh, because it is better to be video recorded, you can uh, see it at your own time. So, this is the compiler construction. This is the, you can take it as a black box, and this is the source program. It can be C, it can be Java, it can be Python. But remember for Java, Python, this can be interpreted. And the technology uh, similar is there. The input is the, the source program in written in C, Java, and target program it may run on interpreter, it can be run on different target machine, it can be same machine. So it depends in which area. It would, uh, what is simple uh, desktop, it may be same desktop, it may be target machine will be different. And the error messages will uh, come, and that error message is very helpful to correct the error. So, we will go into the details and main books are covering here the all of the books, the soft copy of the book is available. May I go to the next slide please? Yeah, this is the book I am following on. Everything is taken from this book. Yeah, this is the, uh, you can see the stages of a compiler. Uh, this is the source program written in C, Java and Delta. This is the lexical analyzer, the first phase, the lexical analyzer, the First thing is what it does, it is uh, it takes out the uh, only the ID, the, uh, you can say the is token, it gives the token and so it does it doesn't check the syntax of this of your program. Any program where there is a variable, there is integer, floating point, take at the C program, it's a, it's a variable may be integer variable, floating variable, it just whether they are syntactically correct or not, that the variable name should not start with any numeric. So, this checking is done by this lexical analyzer. It can be done by regular expression, you can really understand that any variable checking it should start with a really uh, alphanumeric, it is it's not sorry, it should be start with a uh, the, some uh, not, not, not number and but later on it can have a number and integer should not have any decimal point floating point should have decimal point. So, these things can be done very well by uh, regular expression. So, it just a uh, lexical analyzer is nothing but a uh, deterministic finite automata and its input is uh, various regular expressions of uh, your uh, variable declaration, your integer, floating point, uh, string, character. In C, it is not string, it is a character uh, in other cases. So, uh, we, we, we got this variable and we put it in a center table. This is an interesting area. This is the center symbol table filling up this stage. Here, it, what it does, all the tokens, uh, integer, variable, floating point, all uh, the variable will be will be taken here and uh, what are the scope of the variables, whether it is a local, static and even the, all the function names also. What is the scope, whether it is a uh, scope of the variable, everything is stored here. So, it is a very important, it is the heart of your compiler or interpreter and it will be uh, thoroughly checked by the, the syntax analyzer and uh, syntax analyzer will consult from symbol table. Uh, so, the lexical analyzer job is to fill it up the symbol table and syntax analyzer is basically the toughest, one of the toughest any, the parsing and you know the, it should, it should not, it, the, your programming language should be a deterministic context free grammar definitely, 99% uh, is a deterministic context free grammar, otherwise uh, it will be ambiguous. So, only deterministic context free grammar can give the unambiguous grammar. So, say in our uh, colloquial language you can have pun, but uh, any, any sentence can have a double meaning, but uh, in computer programming that is not possible, the computer is a stupid thing. So, uh, it cannot understand pun, so it should be unambiguous tree. Uh, the tree should be syntax tree. After the lexical analyzer, it will be parsing tree. It is a, it should be unique from left to right uh, or, or right to left. Uh, the same parsing tree should be the same uh, if the grammar is unambiguous, definitely. And unambiguous grammar this is a deterministic context free grammar. You can say it can be regular grammar also. But a regular grammar you cannot do a useful programming because regular grammar cannot support the matching bracket. So, if you have a matching bracket, 
then you can call functions and all this. So any programming language of what meaning should have the matching bracket. So it definitely is a context programmer and definitely it should be deterministic context programmer. It cannot be non-deterministic context programmer. That will uh, that will come later on. And uh, this after syntax is a semantic analyzer. Semantic analyzer later uh, rather easy. It just checks whether whether you are checking uh, whether you are putting floating point number integer into integer without any casting operator and all this. It is basically uh, you basically ca it casting things and all this thing will be checked. Uh, this is this portion is called the analysis portion of the component. This is analysis. Uh, after this, the intermediate code is generated. It can be and then code optimizer. How uh, it depends on the uh, generalized code optimizer. Then the different target code optimizer. It can be two stages. One is general and the target machine. So this is synthesis portion, and in every stages the error message might come. So error handler will uh, give out the messages, and from there you can know if you have some uh, variable declaration error, that error message uh, it does the syntax. If the syntax error, it will get error message. It can be general. So this is is a basically compiler stages. Uh, it's same as uh, uh, interpreter also, but interpreter is much simpler because interpreter error handler only one uh, sentence at a time uh, so it is easier to debug so nowadays say java python or the interpreter driven uh, so it is easier to pro program in development and all. so this is uh, compiler uh, stages this is i repeat this is analysis phase the we try to cover the analysis phase in very detail lexical analyzer the simplest thing it can be done by a uh, regular expression and regular expression should be checked by uh, deterministic finite state machine you do not need any push down automata there because it's not required here you need a it is context, basically a deterministic context programmer uh, unambiguous so you need a higher machine here and uh, this is the stage so can you go to the next slide yes that's what i have said this is the analysis phase this is and this is the synthesis phase and this is the machine code this is the intermediate code is generated what I have told in the last slide. This is a, uh, parsing is here, semantic check is here, lexical analysis is here. That's it. I collected one, one such another uh, interesting diagram. The same thing. It's sometimes it's a lexa, sometimes it's a scanner. It generates a token. Token is saved in symbol table. Uh, symbol table should be central here. I think it is missed here. So symbol table. Uh, the token is basically token. Some books say Lexin, so the parsing, parsing action, semantic analysis. This is the front end, this is the back end, and this is the lots of stages are there. So, this is go to the next one. Yeah, and this is a you take it, it's, it's a difficult to understand, but I have taken the hour of group. This is a, say, a single line program. I'll, uh, I'm making a closing up. This is a single line, say, in a position. Uh, equal to the Pascal language, initial and rate. I'll just this is the stages, lexical, syntax, uh, semantic, and this is a symbol table. Uh, let's do this next slide. Yeah, this is the uh, blow up portion. This is you know, say this is a your uh, program line, and this is the lexical analyzer. What the lexical analyzer does, it gives a position, it's a variable name because the P starts with P. Here also it's a variable name. And it has a variable name. So it, it just takes the, you give a token id1, id2, id3, and this is a integer and puts it into the symbol table. And wh what is this type, whether which type of thing, uh, whether it is an integer of uh, this thing, you give an every scope. It is put in this lexical as it does this thing only. And it can be done, I have repeated it in the deterministic final state machine. With a, we, we should have declaration of all this with a regular expression. Next, slide. yeah, say the same thing. Uh, it is a lexical analyzer. It just it, this is the output of the lexical analyzer. It is instead of token. So here we generally tell that uh, we advise programmers so you can use a bigger name. So actually, it doesn't take much space in your a dot out file or exe file because it will ultimately tokenize and it will be saved as symbol table. So you can use bigger name. It doesn't actually take space. So this is the 
this is called the token, sometimes called the lexin, in different books and lexer, sometimes uh, scanner, in the same. Right. Another interesting diagram, same thing, basic analyzer, uh, symbol table, uh, the parser takes every information from symbol table and this is a semantic analysis, this is the analysis portion. So just a, another look at the another look, so sometimes it might uh, get into your mind. Next slide. And here is a parse tree. It is a, a kind of a tree. Uh, I'll come to that. Yeah, the same thing. This is a this is a parse tree or abstract syntax tree and it's a context. Yeah, this is a deterministic context free grammar. It should be deterministic context free grammar without any ambiguity. Symbol table is there, it is another interview. The scanner name is there or is a lexer and is a regular expression. Here you can find the regular expression. Next slide. Yeah. What is the difference between the uh, scanner or lexer and the parser? Here it is uh, I'm again deterministic, regular expression, DFA, linear. Generally it can be done by ON time, but parsing it cannot be uh, it cannot be ON, but we try our level this to make it ON. Otherwise, a 10 line program say 10 seconds and say 100 line programs may 10 to the 6 seconds, that is, that is not acceptable. So, the parsing also, any deterministic context free grammar, uh, the maximum uh, complexity is O and Q. A, N is the number of symbols, and, but O and Q is not acceptable. So, we have to make, uh, modify the grammar and we have to make it O and so that it can linear, then uh, it will be easier. So, that is the whole. Uh, exercise of the parsing. That is the beauty of you have to choose your grammar rule. It should be deterministic context free grammar, it should have an ambiguous and ambiguous grammar, but also it can be parsed in the uh, linear term. That's it. So that is the interesting portion. From ON cube to ON, we have to make it uh, ON, not ON cube. This is the symbol table. Uh, the same thing, uh, let's say it, this is a symbol, here it is basically a symbol table, it's, it's, a, uh, it's saved in a memory uh, and this memory has to be very highly, um, what I can say, it's the searching time should be one, so it should be basically should be hashed to one, uh, hash table, uh, it cannot be done by any other linked list and all these things, because it will be then ON, so any symbol can be accessed at any time. So, preferably it should be like a dictionary sort of thing in like Python, it definitely it should be a hash table. It can be distributed several hash tables as per the scope of the um, your program. So, it is very interesting the symbol table architecture. So, that's it. Next slide. So, symbol table, same thing, uh, same thing, hash table, parsing tree. I just collect different diagrams sometimes. It might be beneficial for Yeah, this is the uh, your parsing tree. Here, the beauty is this that language. This is uh, my original uh, this thing, my line, and this is the parser. See here, operations comes here as a root, and the arguments comes here as a leaf. This is interesting. The parse tree, it is a kind of a tree where your operation should be your. Uh, Note and the leaf should be your arguments. So, this is a not a simple tree, it is called sometimes abstract syntax tree or parse tree, but it should be unique. That's it. Yeah, this is a very famous I like it picture because without it, you cannot understand the, uh, uh, the compiler. This is he is the person, the one from harder side uh, um, to uh, the uh, this is the softer side. Uh, uh, this is Chomsky, Noam Chomsky. The, he has basically single handedly uh, done the, all this grammar portion. Um, and Alan Turing does the harder portion. And they are completely matches. That is, is a great thing. They, this is a, they basically, we are, uh, this is type 3 grammar, regular grammar. Uh, so, a lot of regular things can be done, like uh, say, uh, our lift, uh, our college lift is a, is a, is a deterministic financial machine. 
So it can do uh, any old ambassador without any computer is a deterministic financial machine. So it can do a lot of useful things, uh, this thing. But for a repeated calling some function, you need parenthesis, you need a matching parenthesis. Uh, you know, this uh, deterministic financial machine has does have memory, but it doesn't have a uh, matching hardware to count the, not count, to match opening and close. So you need a stack. Uh, so that is the reason you would need a context free grammar. Uh, the context free grammar has a two part in German. The deterministic context free grammar, example is uh, uh, parenthesis grammar, and another is uh, non deterministic context free grammar, uh, so palindrome grammar. Uh, so it, it, it seems like from this side, left side, and right side, that is very difficult. Uh, it is a non deterministic uh, push down automata is needed to understand. So basically, two types of context free grammar. So it should be deterministic context free grammar, mm -hmm. then you have a deterministic context free push down automata to uh, check it. Uh, but palindrome is uh, interesting, but uh, it is difficult to implement it in a programming language. So that's the uh, here you should you, you remember this is a left hand side context free no context. So left hand side only the variable and right hand side any string. Later on, we learn the uh, Chomsky's normal form. Only the source symbol can go to epsilon, no other symbol cannot go to epsilon. We'll come to that. And that's the uh, next part context sensitive grammar. If it is outside the purview of the uh, programming because most programming, from 98 99% the deterministic context of grammar. Uh, this is for different purposes. Definitely, is one or two context sensitive touch might be there. So, we are not. Considering right now. Next, one. yeah, this is a, a regular grammar. Uh, this is it's a right linear grammar. So you see a variable in the right side, and if the variable on the left side, left linear grammar, you cannot have both right and left. So then it will be context free grammar. It can be a finite state machine. It can be very useful for your know, lexical analysis. You can say uh, why not lexical analysis and. Uh, Parsing can be done in the same phase. Yes, it can be done, but it will be more complex. So it is better to lexical analysis of the first stage by a simpler machine, finite state machine, and then the symbol tables is filled up, and then you go for your uh, parsing. And so, but it, in some cases it can be done in single phase, but it will be more complex. Yeah. So this is a context-free grammar. All programming languages are subset of this uh, deterministic context. Next slide. Same thing, it is a regular context free. Here we will be basically very interested in terms of context free grammar. Yeah. Same hardware, this is finite machine push down. So, the deterministic context free grammar is here. Here is a more complex. Um, so, we will we'll, we'll try our level best to parse the three, two parts with ON. So, ON cube or Uncomputable, it's not. Then the, it cannot be. It cannot be compiled. It cannot be parsed. So definitely, you will not interested. But you should know these are the boundaries. Uh, so deterministic context free grammar. Yes. Yeah, this is a very famous example of uh, deterministic and determinism and non-determinism. You know that determinism in finite state machine and non-determinism finite state machine have the same power. So any non-determinism finite state machine can be converted. To deterministic finite state machine uh, might be more number of states, uh, but it will, be, uh, it will be definite states, no backtracking and all. And but it cannot be said in push down automata. Push down automata uh, power is more, uh, so we will not go into that. Again, if you go for linear bounded automata, that is Turing machine, both side is bounded. We cannot say power is more or not. But again, if you go to the Turing machine, uh, then again the power is same. Very interesting uh, uh, to think. But uh, non determinism, it, uh, uh, it is good, very good to imagine, but very difficult to implement. Well, for, fortunately, it's uh, very easy to implement in uh, the algorithm is there in the uh, FSM. But definitely, non determinism in push down automata has more power. It like I have told the parenthesis, uh, parenthesis is a deterministic, uh, like. Uh, Palindrome, palindrome grammar, uh, it is by non deterministic computation. You have to guess where is the midpoint 
and black people push black people up, uh, so it is very difficult. So next slide. Yeah, it's a finite language. That is that is means uh, uh, it is not a even more subset like switch. Is, uh, is a uh, combinatorial circuits. Then it's a feedback circuit. Then the, here is our language DPDA, deterministic finite solution. But you not uh, you have a grammar also on it. That's the great thing. Uh, we will know what is language, what is grammar. A language can have many grammar, but one grammar must be unambiguous. Yes, uh, this is my, one of my favorite diagram. Here it's a say it's a parenthesis a to the power n b to the power n, and here it is a palindrome uh, that is non-deterministic grammar. Here it is a context-sensitive grammar a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n. Another example is uh, ww. So it simple. It sometimes say wwr is a palindrome grammar but ww is a context sensitive language uh, so it is a more more higher power yes same thing uh, parenthesis grammar our programming languages will be here not this this is one one uh, favorite diagram i give you one of the automata class test uh, same thing ww context sensitive grammar WWR that is uh, it's an even pal even palindrome. Uh, w hash WR is a uh, odd palindrome. It is a non-deterministic push automata. It is outside the purview of our programming language. Here is the parenthesis term. Right. Yeah, this is also very interesting. Uh, uh, this one is uh, this is the equal into context-free grammar, uh, whether deterministic or non-deterministic. The, the parsing is the ON cube, regular grammar is ON, uh, but here we have to try all our tricks to make it ON, uh, otherwise it is unusable, that language. Um, so all programming languages would be deterministic, context-free, ambiguous grammar, and we should have some rules so that we can parse it ON, not ON cube. Next slide. Same things like repetitions, uh, deterministic context free. Here, it is a context free grammar. You know everything that is a uh, visa, uh, uh, sigma is the uh, alphabets, these are production rules, is a starting symbol, and these are variables, or some books say it's a non terminal. These variables are non terminals. Uh, alphabets, these production is a start variable, start variable must be one, production rules so many. Uh, and uh, all grammar has uh, uh, context-free grammar. In fact, not only context-free grammar, context-sensitive grammar can be rules that can be different. Otherwise, uh, the uh, sex is same. Uh, here, one interesting thing that any uh, we generally uh, do not understand that the Chomsky's normal form, but any uh, compiler or if you give anything input, they will always convert to Chomsky's normal form. So. Uh, computer is easy to read uh, Chomsky's normal form because engineering is a binary tree and uh, so if any normal form fortunately any context free grammar can be converted with Chomsky's normal form only the star symbol can go to the F7 uh, and the right hand side only the left hand side one variable right hand side uh, the two variables or one time uh, but uh, rules might be increased if you uh, say if you have a three rules, it might be six rules, but that is easier for com uh, computer to understand to, for parsing and everything. So, uh, fortunately, all context free grammar can be converted to Chomsky's normal form and also graded normal form. I come to that what is graded normal form because they are required for, for understanding the parsing. Next slide. I think that I have stored that is any any Chomsky normal form in 2n minus tf. If I have n symbol, uh, it is a linear definitely. Uh, 2n minus 1, you can uh, uh, you can understand the, what is the grammar. So, definitely uh, that is a requirement the Chomsky normal form you need. And this is grade at normal form. Uh, this is grade at so it starts with a terminal always and all are variables uh, more than 1 or 2. Uh, but there is one uh, simpler form of Brayback 
that is called S grammar mm -hmm. that is uh, your uh, this terminal uh, should be unique there are no other rule uh, the same uh, starts with A mm -hmm. then it is very easy for a context free grammar mm -hmm. to parse and it is a linear parsing mm -hmm. by looking at this uh, symbol look at symbol I can detect from if you go for uh, left to right uh, parsing uh, you can, if you start from the source symbol, source S, and if you write, uh, write to left to right, uh, and looking at this uh, particular uh, symbol at the uh, your string, we know which rule to fire. So S grammar is a subset of context free grammar and deterministic context free grammar, and it can be parsed in linear time O n. That is very easy, but uh, unfortunately, all programming languages cannot be put in a S grammar. It is too restrictive. Uh, so, uh, there will be another type of grammar like LL1. Uh, what is LL1? LL1 again uh, look from left side and looks ahead only one uh, terminal. Uh, then we find the LL2, we say only two terminal. LLK, general form is LLK, uh, which is much uh, better grammar that it is more powerful. And then we say this is called left to right, and another if we go for uh, right to left, uh, like say, understand would do. Uh, so right to left, we try to uh, guess the rightmost derivation and try to reach the source. Uh, that is bottom up parsing, and it is more powerful. Uh, here also LR, that is comes from uh, LR is coming. Uh, that is more powerful grammar will come into this. Okay. So what is uh, I am uh, telling right now? The, this is a context free grammar. It should be determined as a context free grammar with unambiguity and it can be converted to Chomsky's normal form. And all Chomsky's normal form can be converted to Graivet normal form, Graivet to Chomsky's normal form, uh, vice versa, it can be done. Uh, but one good thing of Graivet normal form, uh, it is Sheila Graivet, is a lady. Uh, one Graivet normal form, one subset is the S grammar, where the initial start uh, terminal is always unique so you can always guess which room to fire whenever you are have a terminal of symbols you have a sentence you, you know the which rule can be followed from the root book yeah yes uh, you see this is not a great form why this is it should start with uh, only one it is not and uh, this is great right? two because you start with a simple terminal but whether it's a S grammar, let's check. No, this is not S grammar because why? Uh, this uh, this is this is one rule. This is B starts with here A. So from looking at B, you cannot say whether it comes from uh, this rule or this rule or this rule. Then uh, it can be done. It's called backtracking. Uh, so uh, in top-down parsing, will come. So looking at the, from the left side, we will first try to get this rule. Say again, we see no, it is not coming. Again, we backtrack, then we fire this rule. Again, we say no, it's not matching. Then we try this rule. Okay, it matches. Maybe if it doesn't match, you say error. So, uh, this is called backtracking. Backtracking will, uh, it takes complexity, time complexity is huge, exponential space complexity, time complexity, not linear. So, we do not um, uh, go for backtracking. There are other clever way. Uh, for parsing, that is a look ahead. Uh, we look ahead one symbol at a time from LL1 top down, and we say look ahead one symbol at a time that is from bottom up LR1. They are more powerful grammar, and there is no backtracking there. So, but we have to proper grammar first of all. That's it. Yeah, this is what I'm telling you S grammar or simple grammar. This is LL1, it's a special case of it, very easy. Uh, so this is S term. So it starts with terminal A. Mm, there's no other rule uh, B. So by looking at if you see A here, then we fire this rule. If you see B here, we fire this. Rule. Okay. So S grammar is linear time. It can be done, but not all programming languages you cannot put in S grammar. Otherwise, it's a cake one. Uh, if you put all programming instruction in S grammar, it's too restrictive. Same thing, it's a deterministic context free grammar. So, you see, there cannot be any other parsing tree. So, balance uh, so it is a 0 to the power n 
hash want to be power n. These are the rules. This is unambiguous grammar, definitely, which can be passed. Yeah, this is also. Uh, so we if you use the parenthesis. Uh, so this is in our programming languages. So it is definitely unambiguous grammar. Uh, parsing tree will be left to right or right to left to same parsing tree with that. This is designing context free grammar. Uh, you can convert uh, this thing. Uh, this is not in Chomsky's normal form, but it can be converted to Chomsky's normal form. Yes, this is a ambiguous. Ambiguous is uh, because I have collected the slides from my automata, so forget about ambiguous because in uh, compiler design, we, your grammar should be unambiguous, uh, definitely. So, ambiguity thing is forget. Yeah. Sometimes non deterministic context grammar with simply use a parenthesis. I always do in our uh, whenever we do some uh, written some. Uh, expression, if a little bit confusion we add parenthesis. So parenthesis uh, will give a great help. Uh, so this is the original grammar. If you use parenthesis, uh, then it will be deterministic context grammar. So that is the role of parenthesis and that is the role of deterministic context grammar. Yeah, XML is on a good example of deterministic context grammar. Context free language is inherently ambiguous, forget about ambiguity. Ambiguity, we are not, we are uh, programming, there is no chance. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, this is Chomsky's normal form. Uh, I have two left hand side single variable, right hand side uh, both variable or single terminal. That is very, very useful because it is a basically a binary tree. Computer is very uh, easy to if then else condition uh, and so it is very useful if, if you say why not three variables because tertiary tree is not that way easily uh, doable uh, so so that is the thing Chomsky's normal form is a preferred not only preferred uh, this is the test form and uh, remember any grammar only your starting symbol can go to x7 no other symbol so that can be converted if, if any other symbol is there, you have to convert to Chomsky's normal form so that you can have only starting symbol and the left side. Yes. Yeah, parsing that I have to this is the main thing how we have completed the, the lexic analysis or lexa by uh, deterministic final state machine by regular expression. Uh, it's over in time, we filled it up uh, in the symbol table. Now the best thing is the parsing, that is the toughest thing. So you have a string of uh, terminals uh, with variables and all these things are there, tokens are there. Now we have to find it, whether it follows rules of the language. So looking at it from, uh, from left to right, uh, that is called top down parsing. So you start from source symbol, you try to match or it may be bottom up parsing. From right side, we try to fire the, we try to compact it to reach to source. So that is bottom of parsing. Uh, it should be O n. And, uh, we definitely O n two is not, but this is a theoretical maximum. And this is a LL parser. What is, what the L means? Left to right. Yes, leftmost deviation. We try to get the leftmost deviation from there, and this is also a left to right, but rightmost deviation. This is bottom up, this is top up. Yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, we can close for a day. Uh, so I am available anytime uh, tomorrow, not tomorrow, today itself, uh, from around 11.30 or 10.30. I will be free. So I will be available for any doubts. Uh, so what we have discussed uh, this uh, this lecture uh, from the compiler uh, interpreter, basically same thing. Interpreter does by line by line, compiler is takes whole programmatic time, so compiled output is faster to run, but interpreter is quicker to develop. Technology is the same. The first thing is the your lexa, which can be done by a deterministic finalistic machine with uh, regular grammar and it filled up symbol table. Symbol table uh, should be it should be a dictionary sort of thing, it should be 
uh, some hashing function so that you can quickly access symbols because symbol will be accessed in all stages in the analysis phase so that is uh, your uh, lexical analysis then the parsing and semantic this is analysis phase then the intermediate code generation then the optimization then target code generation optimization these are the generation phase synthesis phase we call it uh, so there uh, this is called the synthesis and this is analysis the analysis the most important is the parsing uh, and the synthesis there are lots of important things yeah. and you can have artificial intelligence dynamic programming all can be there in parsing also you know, dynamic programming different uh, parsing algorithm can use different algorithm Okay, I think uh, any question, uh, I'm most welcome. Thank you very much for your view. Thank you.